Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Good morning, MCC DC. Please rise as you're able, take out your worship folder. There's some words to a song in there called, I Love You, Lord. It's a song that's probably familiar to most. So we're going to sing it through a couple times. It's our love song to God this morning. Thank you for the sweet sound of your presence and your song this morning. Thank you, and you may be seated. We are so grateful that you are here today at the Metropolitan Community Church of Washington, D.C. If this is your first time here, we extend to you a special welcome and greeting this morning. We also say good morning to our live stream congregation today. Good morning and welcome to MCCDC, wherever you are today. Again, if it is your first time, we do welcome you. We don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to let you know that you are a friend we have yet to meet, and we look forward to meeting you. So if it is your first time, we invite you to raise your hand high enough for the ushers to see where you are, and this applause is to welcome all into this place of love today. Good morning, my name is Kathy Alexander, I'm the associate pastor, and I too would like to add my voice of welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today at MCCDC. Truly, MCC is where you are. If you would open up your uh, worship folder, there's a white piece of paper inside that we call our connection card. If you would please, if you have a prayer request that you would like to uh, have prayed for this week, write that in there and put that in the offering plate. Our pastoral care ministers would love to be in prayer for you this week. Welcome. Oh, and I'd also want to mention that the flowers today uh, are given in honor of uh, Ms. Erlene Durden Hunter, uh, Erlene Hunter, which is uh, Elaine Durden Hunter's mother. She's celebrating her 91st birthday today and we wish her a happy birthday. 
I also bring you love and greetings today from Lauren Bennett, our ministry intern today. She is in St. Louis as part of the Rolling the Stone Away conference. And so we are sending her prayers for wisdom and leadership as she has special responsibilities there. And she's also holding us in her heart today. And so we're grateful for that. We invite you now to just double check your cell phone to make sure it's on silent so we can worship without distraction today and so no one is embarrassed. And then we invite you to rise as you're able to introduce yourself to someone you may not know as we continue in worship today. Please remain standing, take your hymnal, and turn to page number one, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, page number one. to a time in our service where we gather together to draw our hearts and our minds and our spirits together. If I could have a little. Um, and at this time, we go to God in prayer as community, as ones in love with the God of our understanding as ones who may need a little prayer, who may need a little more Jesus, who may need something in their lives to get them through. We come to God as ones who may have something to give, may have joy and hope and 
a helping hand to give. Sometimes all we have to give is our brokenness and our sorrow, and God hears and takes that too. God receives that. So let us go to God with whatever you have in your heart, whatever you have in your spirit, whatever you need to receive, and whatever you have to give. Let us go to God in prayer as community. Great and gracious God, you are the immortal one, holy and wise, God of wisdom, God of knowledge, God of love and God of care, God of Sophia wisdom that moves among, among us. Great and gracious God, thank you for your love and care. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the ways that you touch our lives. I do pray, O oh gracious God, that you would move in this space, move in our hearts, move in our lives, that we might serve you, that we might care for one another, that we might be mindful of our world that so desperately needs what you provide through us. Thank you, God. And we pray in your powerful name. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 12. Moses climbed Mount Nebo. He went up from the plains of Moab to the highest slopes of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There, the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead all the way to Dan. Moses saw the whole land of Naphtali and the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh. The Lord showed him the whole land of Judah all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. Moses saw the Negev Desert and the whole area from the valley of Jericho all the way to Zoar. Jericho was also known as the city of palm trees. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, this is the land I promised to Sarah and Abraham, to Rebekah and Isaac, and to Leah, Rachel, and Jacob. I told them, I will give this land to your children and their children. Moses, I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you will not go across the Jordan River to enter it. Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. It happened just as the Lord had said. Moses was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, his grave across from Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows the exact location of his grave. Moses was 120 years old when he died, but his eyesight was still good and he was still very strong. The Israelites mourned over Moses on the plains of Moab for 30 days. They did it until the time for weeping and crying was over. Joshua, born of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to Joshua. They did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, Israel has never had a prophet like Moses. The Lord knew him face to face. Moses did many signs and amazing things. The Lord has sent him to do them in, in Egypt. Moses did them against Pharaoh, against all his officials, and against his whole land. No one has ever had the mighty power that Moses had. No one has ever done the wonderful acts he did in the sight of all the Israelites. 
1 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8. Siblings, you know that our visit to you produced results. You know what happened earlier in the city of Philippi. We suffered, and people treated us very badly there. But God gave us the boldness to tell you good news. We preached to you even when people strongly opposed us. The appeal we make is based on truth. It comes from a pure heart. We are not trying to trick you. In fact, it is just the opposite. God has approved us to preach and has trusted us with the good news. We are not trying to please people. We want to please God who reads our inmost thoughts. As you know, we never praise you if we didn't mean it. We didn't put on a mask to cover up any self-will or greed. God is our witness that this is true. We're not expecting people to praise us. We're not looking for praise from you or anyone else. Yet, as Christ's apostles, we could have imposed our authority over you. Instead, we were gentle among you, like nurses tenderly caring for their own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the good news of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Joseph was a little boy, he was driven by his dreams. God spoke to him and told him that he'd chosen him when others did not understand. Joseph still believed and trusted God. Trusted and was willing to dream on When the world just didn't believe God had promised never to leave him alone Dream on Follow hope wherever it leads In the seed of dreams there's promise of the dawn. Dare to listen for the music. Keep on following the star. Morning can be for dream
Thank you, Daniel, for that beautiful inspiration. I think I'd like to hear that pretty much every morning at 9, so would you mind making an appointment to come by here and, and bring that inspiration every day? Sure. Sure. Wonderful, wonderful inspiration to be a part of our time together today. We live in the information age. Even at this moment, some of you have your iPhones in hand and are perhaps Googling some piece of information. We know so much about so much stuff. And yet information and education in themselves are not wisdom. In other words, you could know everything in the world there is to know about candles and still catch your hair on fire. And we see that played out in our world today. People who have so much information up here and yet do some of the wildest, craziest things. How do we take wisdom and put it into action? How do we make wisdom our life? In our scripture today, we see Moses, one of the persons most known for wisdom. Moses had great wisdom in his head and also in his heart. And yet his wisdom moved beyond knowledge and beyond feeling. And his wisdom indeed moved to his feet and to his hands. Wisdom embodied and emboldened Moses. Wisdom is not only who he was, it is what he did. Wisdom without action is empty. So it's wisdom that got into Moses' feet and spurred him to climb the mountain. And from there he saw the view of the promised land. With that view of the promised land, he saw where his wisdom in action was leading. And where was it leading? It was leading to freedom. Wisdom. It calls us to action and it calls us to share wisdom with others. Wisdom was not contained just to Moses. Moses did not hoard his wisdom. Instead, he extended it to Joshua. In our scripture today, we see that Joshua, born of none, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? Because Moses had laid his hands on him. And then in turn, the Israelites listened to Joshua. So we see this community in alignment with the will and the wisdom and the mission of God. Moses' leadership, his wisdom, became multi-generational, not contained only to himself. Moses inspired others to climb mountains of promise and act on the vision they witnessed. When Moses laid hand on Joshua, he laid hands of anointing on others. And generation upon generation has followed this practice that even continues to this day and will be done in this service during our response time when all who wish will be invited to come forward to receive the anointing for wisdom. One simple definition of wisdom is knowing what to do and when to do it. And yet, it is so easy to not act on wisdom. There are many wise people who struggle with putting wisdom into action, and many of them we see described in Scripture. The Apostle Paul is really honest about this struggle. He says, what I want to do, I don't do, and what I don't want to do, I do do. <laughs> and we see Peter, who was absolutely determined to put his wisdom into action and to stand up for Jesus no matter what, and then he denies Jesus to the crow of the rooster. So what stands in the way? Fear, perhaps? Resistance? Impatient? We try to move wisdom along a little bit? Instant gratification? Or discouragement? When we keep doing the right thing, we don't see the right result, it's easy to give up even on wisdom. And so wisdom blocked is not lived. And wisdom spurs wisdom, so when we don't move in wisdom, it becomes blocked. On the other hand, when we take 
each step of wisdom, new wisdom is released and multiplied. So today I want to give some thoughts on how to increase wisdom in our lives, how to move wisdom out of our heads and even out of our hearts into our hands and into our feet and into our daily actions. So I offer you now this week's spiritual toolkit to repair ourselves and to repair the world. The first thing to do, I think, in putting wisdom into practice is to ground our wisdom in purpose. Purpose-driven action through wisdom. And to keep circling back to the purpose so that it will motivate right action. I'll share a little bit of a personal perspective on this. I've lived with diabetes, and so wisdom says that I make the right food choices. I struggle with that. And so I have a member of my medical team who's a nutritionist who sends me notes every week to help me stay on track. I always look forward to the notes. They usually come on Thursday. And this week's note really applies. She said, Hi, Duane. Remember, it's a journey. And the more you practice, the easier making healthy choices becomes. And here's where she gets really good. She says, does it help if you circle back to your purpose and think about how your choices impact your ability to achieve your purpose? For example, if you feel strongly about helping others, and we've had this conversation, so she knows this is my purpose, then perhaps reminding yourself that in order to do this well, you must take care of yourself and make healthy choices will be a motivator. Circling back to purpose. By being healthy, I'm able to live my purpose of helping others. So think about some of your purpose today and what wise actions will help you live your purpose. Another tool is to ground wisdom in right motives. Sometimes if there is resistance that we feel towards actions, it may mean that we need to go back and make sure that we really are getting the right information. Sometimes there's dissonance that needs to be noticed. When we grind and ground our wisdom in the right motives, we will find ourselves motivated in the right direction. And we see that played out in the scripture that was read today from 1 Thessalonians, where Paul writes, we could have imposed our authority over you. Instead, we were gentle among you like nurses tenderly caring for their own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the good news of God, but also our own selves because you have become very dear to us. Paul's number one motive really was to love people. And so he came back to the relationship. He came back to the right motive. Not about pleasing people, but loving people. Pleasing God. Having inmost thoughts that directed him to others. And the thought is this. If you're struggling with wisdom, begin to do wisdom with the smallest step. One step towards wisdom, putting into action, will lead to another step. Opening the door to fulfilling what it is that you hope to fulfill in your life. Ismail Avior says, no matter how short or long your journey to your accomplishment is, if you don't begin, you'll never get there. Beginning is difficult but unavoidable. So let's say that Wisdom is calling you to have a difficult conversation maybe with your boss or a coworker, and you find yourself putting that off and putting that off, hoping the Holy Spirit will just do something in the relationship, but knowing that you're called to do something in the relationship. What is that first step? Well, maybe it is simply making the time to be with that person. Maybe then making a few notes to have with you in that conversation to be prepared. Put those things in place and then you can enter the conversation knowing that you have taken those first steps. Do something in the right direction. Maybe you want to buy a house and you keep having anxiety about when will you ever get around to buying a house. Well, have you saved the first $100 towards that purchase? Take the first small step. And then seek out moments 
that inspire you to put your wisdom into action. And we see that so beautifully portrayed in our scripture today. Moses had a mountain moment. He stood on that mountain. He looked out. He saw the promised land. The promised land was freedom, and he knew that was where he wanted to go, not just for himself, but for others. So today's invitation is to go climb a mountain after service today. Actually, we know that that's probably not attainable for most, but one thing that we can do, maybe not today, because it's a gray day, we'll not see the sunrise, but on many days, we can all take a moment to get up early and to look at the dawn and to see God in the dawn and what that day might hold. Vera Nazarene was inspired to action by the dawn. And she says this, Have you ever seen the dawn? Not a dawn groggy with lack of sleep or hectic with mindless obligations and you about to rush off on an early adventure or business? but a dawn full of deep silence and a dawn full of absolute clarity of perception, a dawning which you can truly observe degree by degree. It is the most amazing moment of birth. And more than anything, it can spur you to action. Find those moments that call you back to do what you know you want to do and are called to do. Wisdom put in action is wisdom that grows day by day. Wisdom says, I hold a promise for you and a future for you. So step into the future by doing wisdom. Amen. And so we offer today these deep waters of baptism, waters of life, waters of refreshment, waters of renewal. We also offer for you here today oil and laying on of hands. And in our scripture today, we talked about the anointing and the laying on of hands. In ancient times, it was the oil of healing and also the oil of wisdom. We also offer you today this opportunity to reflect on what it is that God perhaps is calling you to do. During this time, think about the ways that you can put wisdom into your hands and into your feet and into your movements. Please rise as you're able for this time of response. Number 58.
We thank you, God, for the sweet, sweet, quiet spirit in this place. We thank you that you come to each one of us, even in this moment, to share yourself with us, to lead and to guide, and to help us do what you're calling us to do by your grace. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen. Be seated. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Jim Garner. I'm the clerk for the, the board of directors for our church. Um, one, one of the things that I am charged with doing in that role as, as clerk is to prepare the that you all will be receiving when we have the congregational forum here in a few weeks. And so I'm now in the middle of pulling that information together. Um, and as I'm doing that, uh, I've, I've really, it, it's caused me to reflect on what we have done as a church over the past year. And John Lennon, the, the, the Beatle, John Lennon, um, once said that life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. And what, you know, what that means is that we're so busy on what's the next thing, what's the, what do we got to do next, what do we got to do next, that we are having life, but are experiencing it. And I think this, the Congregational Forum is a good opportunity for us, and I think one of the purposes of it is to reflect on what we have accomplished as a church. And as I'm pulling together the information, this is a preview of the board report that you'll be getting, but we do a lot. Uh, this church, the members of this congregation are involved in a, a wealth of activities. Just yesterday, many of us were in the uh, walk uh, to end HIV. A few weeks ago, members of the congregation were involved in the, uh, the walk uh, to end breast cancer. Uh, we have our traditional uh, uh, annual events like the Backpack for Kids, which back in August we provided a lot of backpacks for kids that are in schools out there right now. And, and we have uh, done our annual uh, toy drive at Christmas time. That's just a few. There's other things that we are involved in. So we are making an impact outside of this building in the community that surrounds us. But it's also important that we take care of the community here within this building. And that's what our offerings and ties are about. Today we'll have two, um, two offerings. The first is our regular ties and offering. And that goes to support our pastors, our, our musicians, uh, the general operation of uh, the day-to-day -day activities of the church. And then the second offering is our Buchanan Fund, which supports the physical needs of uh, the building, this unique um, building that USA Today said is one of the 25 places you need to see if you're in Washington, D.C. So we need to take care of this uh, place where we worship. So I ask you to please keep those in mind, reflect on what we have done, and continue to support so we can continue doing things like this going forward and to uh, live life to its fullest. So I ask the ushers to please come forward. Dear God, we come to you this morning in a spirit of thanksgiving. We are thankful for this place that we have to join together as a congregation to worship as friends and we also thank you for giving us the ability to impact others outside of this building. We ask that you bless both offerings today, and may they be used for your purpose and to further the community of Christ. We ask this in your many names. Amen. Together praise God's name. Rise up together praise God's name. You are Mother God, Father. 
Father God, awesome is your name. Rise up together, praise God's name. Rise up together, praise God's name. Rise up together, praise God's name. You are wind and fire, comforter, spirit is your name. And you are mother God, father God, awesome is your name. Rise up, together praise God's name. Don't be afraid to clap. Rise up, together praise God's name. Rise up, together praise God's name. You're our Savior, the Anointed One. Jesus is your name. And you are wind and fire, comforter. Spirit is your name. And you are Mother God, Father God. Awesome is your name.
giving thanks to God and offered it to those present and said, drink from this cup, all of you, for this is my blood of the living, of the new covenant to be poured out for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this when you gather together and I will be present with you. Let us proclaim what is the mystery of our faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. Come, receive the gift of God for you, the people of God. Our first communion is number 506. What a friend we have in Jesus. Number 506. What a friend we have in Jesus. Number 473, Blessed Assurance, 473. salvation 
purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in Christ's blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising Savior all the day long. Verse 3, perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with God's goodness. Lost in Christ's love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of reflection so we may come to experience the wisdom you have for us. Amen. Please rise as you're able to join hands in singing of the prayer of the Lord to us. Our Father, which art in heaven, debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the Please be seated. On Saturday, next Saturday, we will have our landscaping day. And it's an opportunity to come out and uh, clean up around the church and pull weeds and plant flowers, plant winter flowers. I believe uh, the pansies will be coming back. And so I identify with the pansies because they're so strong and resilient. I am a pansy. Pansy Power. So if you'd like to come out and um, help out, please uh, contact Greg Snyder and his information is in your worship folder. We are recruiting for our board of directors. This uh, November 5th, as uh, Jim spoke about, is um, the Congregational Forum and November 19th is a Congregational Meeting. And there are three members who are, are rolling off the board or whose terms are up. And if you have the gift of administration, if you have the gift of wisdom, if you have the skills of program or project management, if you have something to offer that you would like to investigate, 
becoming a board member. If you would please see Knut Pankneen, he is our vice moderator, he's up counting uh, right now. If you can see Reverend Duane, um, you can see former board members. Uh, let, and they can tell you what being a board member is about in running the business of the church. And that's what I have to share with you today. Our closing hymn is number 382, Come We Who Love God's Name or Marching to Zion. We're going to sing the first and the fifth stanza, number 382. name and let our joys be known together God's great love proclaim together God's great love proclaim and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne we're marching to Zion beautiful beautiful Zion we're marching onward to Zion the beautiful city of God, then let our songs about and every tear be dry. We're traveling through Emmanuel's ground, we're traveling through Emmanuel's ground to greater worlds on high, to greater worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching onward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Go now in grace, love, and in wisdom. In the name of God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.